Okay, so, hey Facebook fam, so I am making this video because in church um, there's a, a lesson that I've been teaching from, you know, famous last words and one of Jesus' famous last words was, not my will but yours be done. And so we're kind of discussing at Sunday school basically like how did Jesus being fully human endure uh, knowing what was what was gonna what was in front of him you know the cross humiliation torture um, abandonment of all those who loved him how how did he get to that point where even though in his human flesh he was afraid father let this cup pass from me but nonetheless not my will but yours be done you know how how does a human being get to that place in their faith and in their walk with god because jesus is our example he was our human example uh, an example of our human potential and so how do we as humans get to that point of not my will but yours be done even when the task before us is a cross it's it could be persecution you know persecution is coming um so how do we prepare so scripture i'm kind of i'm just kind of gonna paraphrase because i want to focus on the Samuel, uh, Second Samuel story uh, for this video, but just kind of highlighting a summary of what we've been teaching is that scripture tells us that Jesus endured the cross with for two reasons. One, he had joy set before him. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And the other scripture um, was that I'm trying to think, I think it was Philippians, that he became obedient, um, even obedient, uh, like, unto death before a cross, you know, on the cross. So, one, he had something to look forward to. There was actually a joy set before him. He knew that the cross was not the end. There was a reward greater than the cross beyond it you know and then two he was trained he was trained to be obedient and there's another scripture um that talks about jesus becoming ob obedient by the things he had suffered and what did he suffer how did how does suffering pro produce obedience? And I went and I took from Hebrews chapter 12, um, starting at verse 7. I'm just going to kind of highlight. Endure hardship. This uh, chapter 12 is about God disciplines his sons. So starting at 7, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes dis discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more? should we submit to the father of our spirits and live our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best but god disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness so just to kind of summarize what i was sharing at at sunday school um that submitting to become holy as God is holy is is painful <laughs> like it's hard it's hard work like 
you don't just become a, a soldier in the in the army and it's peaches and cream you know what i'm saying like to discipline your body to discipline your mind and your heart and have the right attitude in the midst of things requires dis having self-control and disciplining your body right and that can be a painful thing so and i just want to continue reading so god's discipline is specifically geared to making us holy so if you claim to be a believer of jesus christ and you are not submitting or being disciplined in becoming more holy then you are not submitting to the discipline of god you would be you know rebelling basically um or an illegitimate child meaning like you know nowadays kids and kids you know let's say they're roaming the streets there's no parental or family supervision they're out and about and they're about to rob a bike okay just being mischievous and a neighbor goes who's not blood related goes hey you kids don't do that and the kids go they're like you know what be quiet you're not my mom you're not my family you can't tell me what to do that is the attitude of an illegitimate child one who has no reverence for the authority of of a voice you know because it's like listen you you ain't nothing to me so when god is speaking and he's saying be holy as i am holy if we respond with like oh, okay all right i'm gonna try then we are children but if we go and we're like you can't tell me what to do i'm gonna be who i want to be then you are an illegitimate child so that's kind of paraphrase yeah so but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Discipline is painful. You know, um, getting into an exercise regime and working out and building muscle is painful. It's work, it's effort, you sweat, it's not peaches and cream, you know, but... And I'm going to continue. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So the discipline of God is specifically uh, focused on molding holiness, which is totally contrary to human desires we do not want to be holy we want to please the flesh we have lust we have desires we want to be gluttonous we just we're idolatrous we want money we want fame holiness is just really going against the grain so submitting is a painful process it's like oh mm, mm, i messed up again you know and um so yeah so why on earth would we submit to this okay um at basic and i shared this at sunday school at basic level our basic number one reason to submit to the discipline is fear of the lord now fear of the lord is just a basic proverb says fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom it's not the fullness because the fullness comes from a relationship sorry got allergies comes from relationship with god that knowing that he diligently rewards those who diligently seek him you know when we genuinely love god one he's worthy to be loved like he's good he's he's good like he's good you know um when we 
that's the other reason, you know, there's promises, there's rewards, and that kind of leads to the whole, for the joy set before Jesus, you know, there was a reward, he's going to be king after this, he's going to have a people, uh, he's going to have brothers and sisters to be co-heirs, be a family in heaven, like, that was the joy set before Jesus Christ when he endured the cross, so, <sighs> Sorry, allergies. So, okay. So fear of the Lord is the beginning. It's not the fullness. Okay? But just at a basic. I shared the example how Scripture identifies God as an all-consuming fire. And I asked the class, how do you relate with fire? And, you know, people said things, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, well, fire is neither good nor bad, maybe, but it's actually very good. Like, we need it. We need it to stay warm. We need it to live. We, like, fire helps cook, you know, our food. Um, it's a basic necessity in a way. Um, but it's also dangerous. And so... Fearing, having a healthy fear of fire is just smart at basic. And so I gave the example, like, if you're in a, you know, having a party or a camp out and um, there's, you know, little children, five-year-olds or whatever, running around, okay, and there's a big bonfire in the middle. And the five-year-old is, like, mesmerized by that fire. It's like, ooh, wow, the heat. You know, people are eating s'mores, whatever. It's like, I want to I wanna hold the stick and I put it in the fire. I want to play with the fire. At basic, that child needs to know, don't touch the fire. You know what I'm saying? Um, they don't need to, they don't have the mind or the capacity to understand that, the fire can burn them, first, second, third degree burns, what it is, how the fire molecularly is constructed, blah, blah, blah. They don't need to know. At basic, it's just smart for them to know, don't play with it, okay? So at basic level, we need to know not to offend a holy God. Like, God is holy, and us not being, you know, the things, when we do unholy things, it offends a holy God. Like, why would you want to agitate an all-consuming fire? You know, like, mm, wisdom at basic says, don't do it. <laughs> okay. Now, with maturity, you can learn that there's much you can learn and do with this fire if you respect its properties you know so okay so at basic fear of the lord fire now the story that i want to get into is um and this was a gentleman that was visiting our church he was very happy he he highlighted this story for me, and I've been meditating on it for the last hour or so. Um, king David uh, has been anointed king, and he's gathering Israel together, and he's on a mission to bring the Ark of the Covenant back into Israel. And so he's on this mission. So I'm going to read the story and then I'm going to expound. This is found in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1 through mm, 11. Okay. David, again, brought together out of Israel chosen men, 30,000 in all. He and all his men set out from ba Bela, Bela of Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim that are on the ark. 
they set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab. Ugh, these names, right? Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzziah and Ohio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it, and Ohio was walking in front of it. David and the whole house of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord, with songs and with harps, lyre, tambourines, sistrums, and cymbals. Uh, when they came to the threshing floor of Nacun, Uzziah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzziah because of his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. So this is where I'm, kinda, I'm gonna expound on the fear of the Lord. Basically, the ark was on like a cart and everybody's celebrating, they're worshiping God. Everybody is doing a, a, a good thing, you know, before God and the ox, stumbles and Uzziah just basically goes and it's like whoa you know holds the Ark of the Covenant touches it in an irreverent way and God strikes him dead like die okay so I'm gonna finish the story then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzziah and to this day that place is called Perez Uzziah and in my notes here, Perez Uzziah, where is G, um, means outbreak against Uzziah, okay? David was afraid of the Lord that day <laughs> and said, how can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? He was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite for three months, and the Lord blessed him and his entire household. So when we're considering the fear of the Lord, what's happening is basically everybody's happy, everybody's worshiping God, King David, anointed by God and chosen to lead his people is leading he's guiding very well and something happens unexpectedly and Uzziah touches the Ark of the Covenant in an irreverent manner basically in our human American society he was careless he did a careless mistake the ark of the covenant he had good intentions you know there's there's a cliche it says the road to hell is paved with good intentions right like he had good intentions we're talking israel these are this is like god's church there are many in the church today who have good intentions they're worshiping the lord yay they're following a good anointed leader but something happens, and Uzziah irreverently touched the holy, you know, the, the, the covenant of God, and God struck him dead. Now, fear of the Lord was on David that day, and he goes and he says, how can the ark of the Lord ever come to be? No, so that's the position of somebody who's truly humble, is like... OMG, God just did something, he's a mad, uh, you know, like we need to reevaluate and reassess our attitude around this thing because this Ark of the Covenant is not just a box, you know, the Lord's presence is here and it deserves reverence, so possibly... You know, a reverent act would have been like, oh my God, either not touching it or like, oh, you know, like, what do you do if a fire starts breaking out of control? Do you just slap it? You know, like, do you just like, you know, like, uh, 
you got to be careful. It's like, oh, is it getting out of control? You got to like get help. Like, what do we do? You know, like there's a procedure. And people today, in 2019, we have to understand that God is today who he was and who he will be. He doesn't change. And so God requires and demands a reverential fear, you know, that is, has life and death implications, just like fire does in the natural. Um, so, um, David's attitude of like, hold up, step back, you know, is was smart. He was upset. He was basically like, you know what? I'm not going to touch this thing or take this further. He's like, Let, let's just put it somewhere safe, you know, and um, he, he sought the Lord, you know. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hey, Pedro. <laughs> um, I see that you're watching. I, just leaving this note. The fear of the Lord is something that is so important for today because there is literally an agenda and a, and a marketing that, oh, you don't have to fear God. God is all love. God is all love. Absolutely. But part of God's amazing, perfect love is justice. And God is love, but he's also father. And a good father will render account to those who offend his children, you know, and, and he's holy, he's God, he's creator. What parent, you know, just tolerates complete disrespect from their children like, yeah, you know, like, no, no, God is father and um, he's going to hold everyone accountable for our actions, which is why it's so important that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because, you know, I, I, I've been playing in my head with this whole concept of like the good news of Jesus Christ is the love of God. Well, you know, there's a lot of other faiths and they're like the love of Buddha, the love of Mother Nature, blah, blah, blah. You know, no, the love of God. The good news of Jesus Christ is that a way was made to appease the wrath of a holy God on an unholy creation. You know, like, like we are unholy, our behavior, we're corrupt. We're just corrupt. We're, we offend God's holiness and he sent us his son. As a, as a means to pay our sin debt and bring us into fellowship. And if you are a true son and daughter of the Most High God who is holy, He disciplines us. And I shared uh, with uh, Hebrews chapter 12. He, he disciplines us so that we can share in His holiness. And discipline does not feel good. It is work. It is effort. But God is a God who rewards those who diligently seek him. And if we are trained in holiness, we will reap a peace and an understanding and an authority in the kingdom of God that we will need in these last days. So, family, I send blessings and love. Uh, I hope you enjoy this teaching. This is Noemi with BG2G, bringing glory to God here in New Britain, Connecticut. Blessings and good night.